Over the last couple of years, many people have asked me about my process for achieving clean renders and preserving the quality when uploading to Instagram. So this is less of a tutorial and more a breakdown of my workflow for renders once the animation has already been set up. This isn't necessarily the only way to go about rendering, exporting and uploading to Instagram, but it's the way I've found works for me when producing work daily. Okay, so let's get started. In this first section, we'll look at some of the tips for producing quicker, cleaner renders from Octane. Uh, as a note, I'm using Cinema 4D Release 20 and Octane Build 2019 1.4. Okay, so what I've got here is one of my daily renders from a little while ago. It's a basic hourglass shape that I've uh, sliced up um, using the volume builder and then I've spun around using effectors. Um, but what this call for is you want clean renders so that when it comes to uploading to Instagram, the less noise you have in your initial render then when you do any compression in it out of After Effects for instance and then upload into Instagram the less uh, degrading you'll get in your final video. That starts off by making it a clean render in Octane so um, by default Octane will render with um, direct lighting. Now direct lighting I think the light doesn't bounce around as nice and um, you get kind of a, a darker effect going on so um, what I prefer is using path tracing. Um, now you can see the difference between um, path tracing and direct lighting by actually um, going up into the live viewer and going to the compare tab and clicking store render buffer. Now what that does is stores a render that we just did uh, that single frame uh, and then we can change this over here to path tracing and you'll see instantly it's changing to the uh, path tracing uh, render and we can slide this A and B left and right and see the difference between the two and you can see it looks a lot nicer on the bottom here uh, with the light bouncing up from the ground rather than that direct lighting and you can see we're going to really need to up the samples in the direct lighting to get rid of this noise so we'll stick with path tracing uh, and we can get rid of that okay so in path tracing um, we can if we, I'm currently viewing at half size, so if we view this at oh, full size. Um, and then what we can see is like how long our render is going to take and how we can bring the time down. Now the main thing we can do to bring the time down is our amount of samples. Currently 16,000, which is quite high. Um, 14 minutes a frame, 125 frames, that is going to take a long time. So we haven't got time for that. So let's um, change the max samples down to something like a thousand. And that's gonna take, as I say, 53 seconds. So yeah, roughly a minute, so that's pretty good. Um, diffuse depth and specular. Now I usually put these down to about 10. I mean, we have no specular materials in here, so you could take that all the way down to zero. Um, GI clamp is set to very high by default. Um, we can bring this right down until the color kind of, see it starts getting a bit darker. Whereas the global illumination just isn't picking up. So I usually set this by default to about one. And I think that's going to be good enough for us. And then we're getting down to a render time of about 51 seconds. 52, so about 50 seconds, so it was pretty quick, but we can probably get it down a lot quicker by using the AI denoiser. Now, um, the AI denoiser is a new feature of uh, the latest versions of Oct Octane, I think 2018, 2019. So if you're reasonably up to date, then you should have this. If not, go on the site, take a look. I'm on 2019, 1.4. I think the latest is 1.5. I just haven't updated it yet. But before you can use the AI denoiser, you need to make sure that your um, your cards are set up to render with it. So when I initially set this up, I was having trouble with my uh, Cinema 4D crashing. Uh, I needed to make sure I had the latest NVIDIA drivers. So um, if you go into Octane settings, uh, and then under there we want to go to is it in settings, we've got devices, and see here, I have two cards. I have my RTX 2080, which is an external card in an eGPU. 
and then um, I have this GeForce GTX 1060 which is in my uh, laptop so you need to make sure use for denoising is ticked for both of those um, okay so if you've got that set up uh, then we can actually turn on the denoising in the Octane camera tag now in the tag we go along to the camera imager and enable camera imager um, we, what we want to do is twirl down here the spectral AI denoiser we twirl that down uh, we can enable this and then that will start applying our denoising on completion as it's ticked here denoise on completion of our render now to show you what's exactly what's happening I'm going to change our samples down to something really low like 10 um, and let's reset that to render so we'll get something that starts off really noisy and then we'll bring it back up and get that kind of um, that quality but um, also that cleanness that we're after so setting that to 10 uh, it looks super rough lots of noise okay let's enable the denoiser okay so it's run through the render uh, the D main down here which is the denoised version of main we click on that you'll see it's like super it's, it's, it's done a quite a rough job of cleaning it up but that's because we just had so few samples to begin with but you can see what it's doing it's trying to smooth it out but it's doing it in a cleverer way than it would do in After Effects or some other uh, post-production sort of piece of software where it's just trying to denoise the image this is trying to denoise based on knowing what the 3d geometry is so um, let's up those samples to something a bit more suitable let's go to 200 we we'll go to main because this isn't going to actually show us the denoising until this is completed we can look at our render times what we're on like 15 seconds look at the main oh that's not done yet okay and then so that is our kind of cleaned up denoised version now we can if I look at this area here and then skip between see that's our normal version our rendered version at 200 samples we've got this little bit of roughness here but on the denoised version you can see it's cleaned it up it's super clean 13 seconds of render means we're going to have our 125 frames rendered out um, you know in like half an hour less probably um, and then it's and it's also super clean you know there's no noise in this background okay so now we've got all our settings um, worked out and we know this is going to render nicely we want to set this up to render out a cinema so we have our set of frames that we can work from so if we go to render settings there's a couple of ways that we can render out from um, Octane uh, this kind of denoise beauty pass um, the first way we can do is the traditional way where we tick save pick our file path our format now I would always render out as still images please don't render out as videos um, they can get compressed as they're being rendered out so that's ruined it to start with and then if your um, file crashes or your render crashes for some reason you've lost everything also if you render frames and everything crashes you've got all the frames saved up until that point of the crash so please always save as images um, go into Octane render now in here um, you can have this ticked use denoise beauty pass now if you have that ticked it's quite obvious it will render this beauty pass um, as your option in these uh, frames um, the only problem with that is that if in the camera imager you did something like you know you wanted a particular type of uh, LUT on there it's not necessarily going to render that out because it will I think it renders uh, linear um, rather than um, RGB and actually picking up these colors and there's a way around that if, if you wanted to have something like that on the other way of doing it is go to render passes and enable render passes again pick your path pick your format images and then the color and tone map profile we would we'd change those to sRGB and tone mapped and that would mean that when these frames render out they'll look the same as they do in your camera imager setup I had a real problem with that when I first started using Octane I didn't realize why these weren't rendering out correctly um, and then under denoiser passes 
tick beauty. So that will render out a series of frames that are just your beauty pass. Okay, so once you've got them set up and rendered out, we can jump into After Effects, do a little bit of post, and then prepare for export and um, uploading to Instagram. So here we are in After Effects. Um, I've imported my 125 frames. You can see it's got uh, D-Main in the name. Um, that's because I used the Render Passes option, so it added that D-Main to it. Um, all I do usually in After Effects is add a couple of little tweaks. Um, I'll do a, a new adjustment layer and then I usually do a, a vibrance layer and up maybe up the vibrance and the saturation just so it kind of so it kind of pops more <laughs> um, and then I will uh, add some levels and I might just... Just tweak the look. Okay, so very simple post. That's the beauty of using Octane is that you can kind of make it look how you want in cinema and you know just do a little bit of tweaking afterwards. So that's all I usually do in After Effects uh, for my renders. Um, when it comes to production work that I do in my day job, um, I probably spend more, a ton more time in After Effects because I'll have tons of layers and I'll be comping everything together using EX file files with all sorts of things. So that's a whole other uh, kettle of fish. So for now, um, we can actually export this. So if I go file and we're gonna export this to the uh, media encoder. Okay, so here we are in the media encoder. I guess you could use your own video encoder, uh, but I'm sure they've got similar kind of settings. So I render out um, files for Instagram as .mp4, h264. That's to start with. Okay, um, so we've got mp4, .h264. I'm going to turn off audio as we don't need it. I don't really do audio in my renders, but um, maybe that will change in the future. Um, couple of settings that I change mainly I will change bit uh, rate encoding to VBR 2 pass I usually set this to something like 20 and 25 um, and then I'll tick maximum render quality um, you'll see here estimated file size 12 meg now um, when I rendered for Instagram um, I read somewhere that um, you want to try and keep it under 15 meg if it goes above 15 meg then that's when Instagram kind of some sort of additional compression starts kicking in so as my rule of thumb is to try and keep it as close to or uh, under 15 meg as I can and that seems to have worked out okay so okay so we'll render that out now the final stage in actually getting your video uploaded to Instagram is transferring from your computer to your phone. That's a really important stage in the process because there's some methods of file transfer that can actually compress your video uh, to optimize actually moving it between one place and the other like email. So what I do is actually I upload to Dropbox on my computer and then um, I have Dropbox on my phone where I will download the file and then from there I will upload it to Instagram. Now you could also use Google Drive or iCloud Drive or Apple AirDrop if you're on a Mac. I'm not too sure what the equivalent is if you're on an Android device. Um, if you let me know in the comments below um, then we can share it with everyone else. So once you have the file on your phone you have to make sure that you have a solid and stable connection when uploading and Wi-Fi is always the best um, I've read that poor connection can mess up the quality when uploading so it's best to be safe I guess um, so that's basically it so that's my process from beginning to end for rendering um, exporting and uploading uh, like I said before this isn't necessarily um, the, the way that you should do it um, but this is the way that I do it and that seems to work for me um, I hope you found this helpful I hope it was interesting um, please like and subscribe and um, I will see you next time thanks bye